Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a post-Valentine Board of Commissioners meeting for February the 15th, 2018. Uh, if you would, uh, join us in the invocation and, uh, and, and pledge led by Commissioner Strickland. Father, we come to you tonight and thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love for us. We thank you for bountiful blessings that you bestow us upon us each and every day. Lord, we uh, thank you for those that protect us not only around the globe, but protect us in our very own community, our first responders, our EMT people, our firefighters. Lord, uh, protect them from, from harm and keep them out of harm's way. Lord, we pray for wisdom and discernment tonight as we deliberate the affairs of our county. And uh, Lord, we would pray that everything we do would bring honor and glory to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. Um, first item is public comment period, and our first speaker is uh, Mr. Julian Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I didn't know you were going to get to it that quickly. Let me pull out my uh, timing device. Uh, okay. I'm Julian Smith, uh, known as Putty, and I plan to speak for no more than five minutes. So if I'm interrupted, I, I will have to turn off my timer and resume timing when the interruption ends. Before I get to my main topic, I would like to announce that I will be running for the at-large seat now held by Commissioner Stambaugh. Now for a list of things I would like you to consider tonight and in the near future. First, I encourage you to pull consent agenda items 26 and 27 for discussion before deciding whether or not to spend money to prepare engineering studies for intersection improvements on St. Simons Island, you have already received emails from several citizens regarding these two items. So please pull them and discuss them. Second, I encourage you to reject any plan or proposal to apply for or to allocate funds for beach renourishment by mechanical means. That term beach renourishment is a misnomer for renourishing the bank accounts of contractors and consultants who will benefit from intrusions of federal, state, and local tax dollars. In, a, in an editorial yesterday, the Brunswick News came out firmly against interfering with the natural sand sharing process. And some of you may remember the huge opposition to beach renourishment in 1992. Please don't open that stinking can of worms again. Third, I encourage you to authorize a well-designed survey of the entire community to discover what percentage of respondents, of citizens, did or did not evacuate for Hurricane Matthew in 2016 or Tropical Storm Irma in 2017 and to determine what percentage say they are likely or unlikely to evacuate for the next storm. Fourth, as I have before, I encourage you to begin the process of learning what public facilities on the three islands and on the mainland can be used as places of refuge or as emergency shelters for citizens who do not or cannot evacuate when a hurricane or major tropical storm threatens. I also encourage you to start planning to store emergency supplies of food and water in some of those shelters or places of refuge. Fifth, I encourage you to make your public comment period less limited and restrictive and to encourage the two planning commissions to establish 
public comment periods at the start of their regular meetings. There are no provisions for our planning commissions to hear from the public on items unrelated to applications before them. Six, I encourage you to amend the procedures of the planning commissions and of this county commission to schedule public site visits or site walks for most land use applications that come before these boards. Again and again in recent years, I have attended meetings where commissioners have voted on site plans and special use or conditional use applications for properties they have not actually visited, seen, or walked upon. Seventh, I encourage you to authorize county staff to post all draft minutes of meetings, of past meetings, as reports on the online, on the online agendas for future county uh, and planning commission meetings, so that citizens who have attended these meetings or watched them online can point out errors and missing information to commissioners. I also encourage you to remove approval of draft minutes from the consent agenda and make it a separate agenda item. If you don't understand why this makes a difference, you can ask me now if you're curious. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, our second speaker is Sandy Dean. Sandy, state your name and address for the record, please. My name is Sandy Dean. I reside at 1127 Union Street. As a mainland resident, business owner, and taxpayer, I'm here to speak about the upcoming work session agenda item, Federica Road Realignment Project. You will vote on this project to apply for federal funds at that meeting, but there are no plans for public comment on the project before you vote. Transportation planning covers all of Glen County, including the city. There are still many unanswered questions on this project that should be addressed before the county applies for money on behalf of Christ Church for their master plan. Here are just a few. First, the Frederica Road Alignment Project was not in the county's most recent that was adopted in 2016. Projects on or added to the list have to meet federal requirements, including public hearings. You must check yes that the project is county priority. When do you plan on holding public meetings to see what Glen County taxpayers think about funding a church project? Is this really top priority for the county? Two, the project only appeared at the request of Christ Church as part of their master plan. If the county commissioner is considering suggestions for new transportation projects, then all taxpayers should be able to participate and an open process to identify our most urgent needs. Did I miss the public notice for new project ideas? What projects already on the list may be bumped or delayed to make room for this one? Three, at your special call meeting four weeks ago, most of you looked surprised to hear taxpayers were gonna be asked to contribute a cash, mat cash match of 115,000 and serve as the applicant and construction manager for this one plus million dollar project. How much in cash and staff time will the county have to spend on this project? Where will that cash come from? Four, if Glen County has this much extra staff time and funds to pay for a project that just happened to appear on their radar, then why are we hiring consultants to help out with the daily operations? Aren't there other projects throughout the county that have been on this list for some time? Five, Commissioner Murphy stated at his town hall that the point of the Frederica Road realignment project was drainage. And at your special call meeting, it was presented as public safety issue. If drainage is the purpose, then I can name many other places in the county and city that are in desperate need of relief. College Park comes to mind. Our local delegation members have not been contacted about this project but the grant draft that you received in January said they endorsed it. But as of today, they still have not been contacted. Seven, what about moving the utilities, gas, electric, and water? 
As of 4.30 this afternoon, the joint water sewer has not been notified. How can they know what this project will cost if they haven't done the obvious? You have a responsibility to know about the project before you commit my tax dollars. In short, your decision should be a transparent one that is based on actual data and county needs, not someone else's wish list that puts the taxpayers on the hook. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaker number three, uh, Caroline Carter. I want to speak on behalf Ms. Carter, of the- if you would, just your name and address for the record so okay. they can get it. My name is Caroline Carter and I'm at 270 Village Drive, Thank St. You. Simons. Thank I want to speak on behalf of the German Village residents and offer an additional perspective on the land trust intention to use our neighborhood street as the entryway to their new Musgrove Water Park and boat ramp. I'm here tonight to speak to you all as a concerned mom. My husband and I bought our house on Village Drive less than two years ago after saving to afford a home on St. Simons. Never could we have imagined that we would end up living on this quiet little street, which resembles living in the country, yet being steps from the water. With our three young children, this has truly been a dream for us. Not long after the land trust and the Musgrove deal was made public last year, I did quickly notice a change in our little street. With the recent increase in traffic, I now feel as though our children are not safe to play outside. I no longer feel that my two older ones can freely ride their bikes in our street or walk down to our community dock to go fishing. I can only imagine how much worse this will become if their announced plans continue to move along. New traffic, such as trucks, boats, trailers, vans, cars, commercial tours, and trolleys will all bring strangers through our neighborhood all day, every day of the year. The land trust would then soon demand that our trees be cut and our little street widened for their visitors, something that would only increase speeding and would not prevent the dangers that are posed by the strangers attracted to this new park. Unfortunately, it's been brought to our attention that some on the land trust board have undermined our concern of traffic and safety, and they said that we should not even have our children playing in the street anyway. For those of whom may not be aware, our neighborhood is a dead-end street, one for which a school bus cannot even turn down to pick up the children because there is no real turnaround. Two cars cannot even pass each other at the same time in most parts. Our children must walk up to Lawrence Road on our street, the same street that the land trust wants to use to bring in park traffic starting at dawn, which is the same time our children will be heading to the bus stop. Knowing all of this, how could anyone consider approving the use of our street? A parent can easily go to the county's website and do a search for offenders living in their neighborhoods, but there's nothing that we can do to know who will be coming into our neighborhood to go to this new park. If you could just put yourself in my situation, a mom who does not feel that her children's safety is something to undermine or overlook, then I guarantee you would not want this same sort of threat in your neighborhood. If this were your children, your grandchildren, or your home, would you want to feel as though their safety or your safety had been put in jeopardy, especially when there are other options to access this new proposed park? Are we concerned more about a tree when many of the same land trust leaders seem to have no problem with cutting similar trees to relocate an entire road not too far from our neighborhood for Christ Church, which I also attend? I know the land trust has submitted has not submitted any plans for review to the county yet, but they are required to get the county approval. And as a Glen County citizen, it's concerning to hear that a developer confidently announced such plans with no approval and no regard for the county laws or neighborhood concerns. The last thing I would just like to say is I was surprised to get an email yesterday from the Land Trust Director himself, David Pope, asking about my plans to speak with you all tonight. Apparently, he said he had been given the list of tonight's citizen speakers along with our names and our addresses and our topic of concern by someone in the county. So my question is, are these lists made public or are they just sent to a select few individuals or groups? Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Carter. 
All right, we don't have any uh, presentations or announcements tonight. Public hearing items, alcohol beverage license. Public hearings will be limited to 30 minutes for each opposing side with five minutes allocated to each individual speaker. Comments are to be limited to relevant information regarding your position and should avoid being repetitious. If your group has a spokesperson, please allow that individual to present your group's position. In the time allocated, your cooperation in this process will be greatly appreciated. Item number one, consider the issuance of an alcohol beverage license to Paul Hinch for my two sons, uh, Incorporated DBA Willie Jewels, Old School Barbecue, Brunswick, 252 Millennium Boulevard, Brunswick, Georgia. The license is to sell malt beverages and wine for consumption on premises of a restaurant. Sunday sales permitted. Chief Powell. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, Commission. Uh, the applicant must meet all the requirements as required by the ordinance. And he is present. All right. This is a public hearing item. Uh, anyone wishing to come and speak in opposition to the application may do so at this time. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the application may do so at this time. Seeing none. Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I just got one quick question. Are, are you, you are moving into the old huddle house? Correct. That, that's where it's going? Okay. Uh, I just wanted yeah. that for my own clarification. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the issue of the license to Paul Haynes for my two sons. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the application signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Good luck to you. Public hearings, land use, <clears throat> AB 3578, consider the application for abandonment of a portion of the unopened alley right away on block 23 in the East Beach subdivision, St. Simons Island. The property is behind 340, 43, 13th Street. Uh, James Benefield, agent for Catherine Holt, applicant, uh, Mr. Andrews. Commissioners, this is a request to abandon a um, portion of an unopened alley on East Beach to the rear of the property of the applicants. Um, when they get there, when we get the uh, presentation up, the location is between um, 12th and 13th Street. Uh, currently, there is no public use of the alleyway. Uh, the owners of the property have recently built a new house. They tore down an old house and built a new one on it. On, e on the north end of East Beach. Specifically, it's a request to abandon a portion behind this property. Um, this is the plat that was prepared for the, for the abandonment request, showing just the one half of the alley. Um, abandonment area is currently fenced to the rear of, this is uh, the new house that was built fence wraps around, comes around behind, and this is uh, the area of the alleyway. The general information for the site is, is the, the same as the other, as most of the other abandonments on East Beach. We don't have evidence of it being used. There isn't utilities to the rear. And uh, when I reached out to the regular users of the right of way um, outside of requesting that a drainage easement be retained for any possible future issues along the area. There was no request for any um, holdouts. And as of this afternoon, there was no uh, public comments received in my office regarding this request. Okay. Questions for staff? Uh, yes. Paul, did, oh, uh, did, did you say this was a, a closed in alley or a Right away? No, it sir. The, it the, the fence itself, I'm sorry, this, this portion of the alley is uh, the property owners, when they, the fence actually encloses that portion of the alley, they're requesting to abandon. But the alley itself is not. It's continuous all the way through the block. There, it, none of it's open for public use except for this section that, that has the, uh, I think portions of that section are open. Could we prove this? Can a, 
fire truck or emergency vehicle get through there if needed? Down this alleyway, no, sir. But there, the alleyway isn't open for vehicle traffic at this point. They can't get down there. Okay. Well, they grow some stuff all in it, I guess. Well, there, there is. Um, let me see if I got a, if I've got a better picture of it. This is the, on the adjacent lots. This is yes, sir. It's oh, yeah. it's overgrown and. Oh, okay. And some of the some of the residents have been maintaining it as their backyard and that kind of stuff. Paul, why would yeah, they ask you. for this abandonment? Is it because they need uh, more setback? I understand they, they're they're going to make application for a pool. <coughs> okay, but the uh, pool would be on the property, on their property. That's correct. Um, but it's going to be close to the alleyway, so they need setback is what they're looking for. Is that? Uh, as I understand, they'd like the extra area to, to have, a, have the pool they, that they want in the back. But with the drainage easement in there, it's not going to allow for mm -hmm. permanent structures yeah, within that drainage nothing easement. Nothing will be constructed in the alleyway if we abandon it nothing nothing will be approved yes sir okay so they don't have a current issue with building too close to the line with the setbacks or anything correct no sir okay they're four Is square that that they're, they're, they're doing this to to have more room for a for a swimming pool in their backyard their new house the, didn't have issues with their building setbacks none of the neighbors had any issues i i didn't hear of any okay. no sir Any other questions for staff? I don't see Mr. Benefield. Mr. Shoup, are you representing? You're not. Uh, anyone here representing the applicant? Okay. This is a public hearing item. Um, those wishing to uh, come forward and speak in opposition to the application may do so at this time. I'm Julian Smith, and I'm here to speak in opposition to this uh, abandonment. You've heard me on this kind of issue before. You'll hear me on it again. Uh, <coughs> the subject line in the memo before you uh, says that this refers to a portion of an unopened alley. It is not unopened. It has been closed uh, for private purposes some years ago. Uh, item B, uh, having to do with present usage right away, informs you that this section of alley is currently not improved for public access. No, it is not improved for public access. The county has not wanted to improve it for public access. The county has not stopped private property owners of Butters from taking over and using for their own purposes this alley. Um, okay. The, under past history, we're told uh, that there is no evidence of the alley having been open for public access. That's illogical. Uh, why were all of these public alleys in East Beach many of which are still open, including some near this site, why were they built, why were they established in the first place? To allow citizens to reach the rear of their properties, to park in the back rather than on the street, to put their garbage cans out to be picked up uh, on the alley. These alleys were established as neighborhood and community amenities and past commissions, uh, it's not your fault, but past commissions have not done anything about it. Public works has not stopped people from closing off to public use sections of alleys. Neighbors have not stopped each other, but have imitated each other. Uh, this is a cultural problem. This is another example of the uh, the, the failure of community. Uh, we're told under potential use in the future, this portion of the right-of-way could be used for access to adjacent property and to access and contain utilities. It could be used by the individual property owner to get to an adjacent property if the adjacent property is not, if the, if the alley 
is not blocked. These alleys in this section are blocked. Um, I see no public benefit in abandoning this, but you're gonna do it. I know you're gonna do it. Uh, I dare you not to do it. Uh, so th this is, I really feel inadequate to the inadequacy of this commission, of this community to keep things public as they should be. No, thank you. Please. Yes, sir, Mr. Port. By the way, guys, I didn't do my homework on the uh, Hugh Bork, resident of the island. I didn't do my homework on this one coming in. I looked like it was somewhat innocuous. But just looking at this presentation on the screen, I got to ask three questions. It may already be answered, but bear with me a minute. Number one, if this is abandoned, meaning the county has let go of its uh, right to the use of this, okay, recognizing it's deeded to the property owner to the halfway point of the, of the alley, I assume that's the condition. It strikes me this improves the value of the property, and there's been no discussion on adjustment of the tax base for the property. So if the county's going to give up something, it seems like value for money ought to be brought into the discussion. It struck me when we had a discussion similar to this two or three meetings ago, again on East Beach, but it was another alley abandonment adjacent to the property. Didn't think about it, but it, it struck me as one of these midnight uh, uh, wake up, oh, what the hell's going on things, right? So if we're gonna give it up, and I really don't have one opinion one way or the other, but it seems like there ought to be some remuneration because it is value to the homeowner, okay? If the county is gonna give up their rights to it. I understand the drainage easement, but, um, and they still have ownership of the property with the appropriate easement, but there is value going on here. Second issue that struck me, I heard in this presentation that we, um, that there was no known or no voiced opposition. What is the formality of notification to the adjacent community of this abandonment to give the citizens the right? And I bring that question up in the context of a recent discussion we had at the IPC and, and brought forth here, where um, this is dealing with the um, Plantation Creek that the residents in the area, because there were no other signage posted, there may have been some on the initial hearing, were not aware that there was additional hearings going on. So they were not informed. Yeah, you can claim it's on the web page. Yeah, you can go look for it if you know what to look for and when to look for it. But did the residents get a fair shake at giving them an opportunity to come back? They may well be okay with it. But I bet you there's going to be some me too that come along with it, hence the first two questions I asked. What's the county position on the change in the value for property by this information, by the county relinquishing its, its claim <coughs> on this, this land. So I'd like to hear some discussion or answers on those, or at least be considered before you guys take a uh, vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition to the application? My name is Jeff Kilgore, I live in Brunswick. Um, and I believe I heard that the obstruction in the alleyway is the fence that's been built. I'd like that to be confirmed or not, first of all. Second, what code enforcement reports exist for the construction of a fence on county property? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll see if we can address all those issues, but anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Good evening, Lisa Norton. Um, when I looked at the plat a few slides previous to this, I was curious as to exactly how much footage we're gonna allow uh, if this alleyway portion is given. And also, or has the cart been put before the horse? Do, do we have an actual construction of a fence here that may be in violation of code? Are we trying to get the record straight now after the fact? I'd also like to challenge our island commissioner, Dr. Murphy, to please check in to various alleys and beach accesses and, and make that an agenda to ensure that the public and the residents of St. Simons are getting full use 
of our property on St. Simons. I believe there are some beach accesses that have been wrongly blocked from the public. And I think to restrict island movement, whether it's through fire trucks, emergency vehicles, or just foot traffic, trying to get to our public beaches and areas on the island should be cautiously guarded in granting any such. But my first question is, has this fence been put up in violation of code? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition to the abandonment? Seeing none, anyone like to speak in favor of the application? Seeing none. Uh, Mr. Andrews, uh, or uh, Ms. Thompson, you, you may uh, need to come up as well. All right, uh, there were some questions asked uh, regarding notification, um, and whichever one would like to address that. Uh, notification the ordinance requires that the um, abandonments through the abandonment process that the uh, public is notified uh, via mailing to the adjacent property owners via sign posting on the site and via um, ad in the or notification in the public I mean in the newspaper and those are, were done per the per the ordinance as required and uh, it's within 200 feet of the area to be abandoned is where we send mailings out to Okay, now was the fence put up? Is the fence on the county property already? It's in the, it's in the it appears to be in the county right of way. Yes, sir. Which is not uncommon on East Beach. So, what do you mean it's not? Uh, commissioners, Pamela Thompson, Director of Community Development. We do not require a permit for a fence up to six feet tall, so those are structures that can be erected without any county pre-approval or review. And um, our code enforcement is complaint driven, so if we get a complaint, we do go investigate it. And one option that some citizens take is to ask for, air, to do exactly what they're doing this evening and ask you to consider abandoning that. If that were to not be approved, then we would start the process to have the fence removed out of the right of way. How, how far over on county property is that fence? If they have to move it, how many feet towards that house do they have to move? If, if the property is not abandoned, is that is that your question? Yes. If the property is not abandoned, how far? How cl much closer to that house do they have to move that fence? I, I believe the fence will be moved. Uh, pretty much the whole of the 10 feet. So it'll be right at the back of their house? It, it will be right at the right at their property line, which is the, their house is, has a seven foot setback to it. So it'll be seven foot from the back of their house? Yes, sir. So I, house, I assume that their house is built close to their, close to their building setback. You assume? Well, that, yes, sir. I mean, when the house was built, that was, that would have been one of the requirements to, to so meet the built requirements. So the house at the minimum setback, and now they want the county to abandon the property so they can have, actually have a backyard. So we're, we're talking, what, 17 feet? Yes, sir. That, that would be uh, the approximate. Well, I recall in this commission meeting, gentlemen, a 79-year-old man who had a garage that was built 18 inches over the legal limit and this commission denied him a, uh, uh, a waiver on that so he could put the roof back on his garage, but you're asking me to give up 10 feet of property because they built their house on the minimum setback, which if you look at their house, you can see here, is bigger than anything else that's sitting in that development. That, that bothers me, gentlemen. We're telling a 79-year-old man whose neighbor said they don't have a problem with an 18-inch problem with a garage he can't put the roof back on it because what, what was the statement that was used? It's better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. And this commission on a vote of five to two or four to three, I can't remember exactly what, said no. And now we're being asked because somebody built their house right on the edge of their property on their setback. Now they want some backyard. We should abandon that. Thank you. I, just, I, uh, just out of, go ahead. No, go ahead. 
just out of curiosity, <laughs> how do I have a room to put a pool in? Yeah, that's my question. Only a small pool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yes, sir. The actual pool structure itself, what is in the ground, has to meet setbacks. If you have any concrete uh, surround, uh, as long as it's on grade, that can be in your building setbacks. But um, what Paul is saying is he did not get the exact distance from the rear of the existing house. He was looking from the property line to the requested abandonment. They they have to meet setbacks. That's the minimum distance it is from the house. I can't tell you exactly how much it is. The pool would also have to be a minimum of seven feet. Y'all are all absolutely correct. If you abandon this piece, then that the new seven foot rear setback starts at the middle of the alley and goes back. And so that is what would allow them the space in the yard to have a pool. But the bottom line is the fence as currently built is on county property. Correct? Yes, sir. That's my issue. That is my issue. Could, could, I, could I address some of these things? So, I, I, uh, Commissioner Sample, I, I, I can't re recall the specifics of, of the gentleman who built over the property line, but uh, I, I guess uh, the points I would like to make that this, this is a recurrent theme, at least in District 2, where people have, in fact, encroached on uh, on, on uh, county property uh, uh, adjacent to their homes. And, and if we went through every neighborhood all throughout District 2, we'd be uh, re removing a lot of plantings and uh, uh, other structures. And, and maybe that's where you want to head with this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I'm not here to defend uh, the fact that a, the fence was built in anticipation or maybe uh, in violation of the request for abandonment, but this, this type of request for abandonment is, is extremely common. And to say it's an alley uh, is, is to, to really misuse the term alley because it, it, it currently is, is not in use as a, as a means to access the back of any of these homes uh, along East Beach. Uh, I've walked many of these areas and I've looked at these properties and I agree with Mr. Bork. I, I do get a little bit concerned about the fact that we may be giving up uh, property that we're abandoning uh, for, for no, no d great dollar value I in return. Uh, and, and I have seen some properties uh, in District 2 that, that I would think would, would clearly meet your goal of, hey, this is value, valuable property, and, and the county ought to receive some, some, some recompense for that property. But I don't think these little 500 square foot plots behind uh, properties that people want to acquire just to improve the setback line to put in a pool or a patio uh, really necessarily meets that. Um, uh, they, uh, they really don't, don't serve the purpose of a tra traditional, uh, traditional alley. And you know, I, I've heard my colleagues say, well, they do, the, the property does go on the tax rolls. So this 500 square feet will go on the tax rolls, probably will raise the property taxes 10 or 15 or $20. It's not much. I get that. Uh, and then to answer uh, Miss, Miss Norton's question, which was separate from the issue at hand about uh, beach accesses, uh, I fully concur. Uh, I've, I've gone out with Public Works uh, and others uh, soon, as soon as I was uh, sworn in and looked at these areas, and 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 we we, we have paid attention to it, and we we, we are clearing uh, the way so people do have access. There are restrictions from the DNR, for instance, on what we can do, and some of these uh, areas of passageway between houses need to be cleared by hand, as opposed by people just coming in with with weed whackers and. Uh, and, uh, and, and electric saws and, and gas-powered saws. So, so we are attentive to that. And uh, some people do put up no parking signs and, and no trespassing signs. And, 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 and we're, we're, we try to uh, address those on a case-by-case -case basis. So at the end of the day, you know, I, I see no harm uh, in this quote-unquote abandonment. Uh, as I've walked these properties, uh, I think it's, it, it, it makes sense. Uh, if you all want to punish uh, this applicant 
because a fence was put up uh, in advance, so be it. But but I, I think it's a it's it's a, a quite quite harmless uh, request that we see a lot of. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And I ask you, Mr. Coleman. Um, <coughs> I was about to say the same thing Commissioner Stambaugh said a while ago, and and you know Glen County's noted. Uh, for the fact that it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. Um, yeah, I've been in this boat. I bought a house out. I bought a lot out in Bell Point. Had a county drainage easement running through the lot and half lot. And uh, I had no idea about all the stuff that we're discussing at this point when I bought that and was going to build a house on it. <coughs> but I'm here to tell you that my contractor was was uh, edu educated enough to know that when I asked, can we move the house over this way, and he says, no, there's a setback there on a drainage easement. You'll have to get permission from the county commission to do that. And that's what Bob Coleman did. And I got permission. And it was, a, and so what, what I'm saying here is I think you know, just simple logic and, and rules uh, apply here. If, if it applies to one, it applies to everybody. Now, 500 square feet, okay? I don't think that's the point. The point is, is this person, and it's happened time and time again, and it's going to happen again, and it's going to happen in a bigger way, and it's going to be lots and lots of money involved instead of a wooden privacy fence, and it's going to happen again. And until this commission steps up to the plate and says, we're going to draw a line right here, it's going to continue. And so I, I, just, I just can't, for my... For my life, I, could, I just don't understand why anybody thinks this is okay. Well, it's not okay. Commissioner Coleman, to be clear, a fence doesn't require a permit. So the contractor doesn't the have to time. tell us that. Um, we are complaint driven. We did not receive a complaint that this was in the county right of way. This owner approached us and said, approached the engineering department and said, I would like to go through this process that I'm allowed to go through to make this request to the board. And so we accepted that like we will accept any citizen that goes through a process that y'all have codified that they can go through to make a request. We answered the questions in that ordinance about how we currently use it uh, and what our needs are in that area. So that's the report before you tonight, including the use of the maintaining the drainage easement. If y'all do not approve that, we are now aware that it's in violation. We would then start the process through our code enforcement department to have it moved or to take the owner to court to have the issue remedied. This comes up time and time again. And what you just said, your opening sentence just there, re repetition, was we don't require a permit for a fence. Well, why not? Because your code that the Board of Commissioners adopted does not require a permit for a fence. Well, let's change that. Well, sir, if you all want to direct staff to bring forward an ordinance amendment to that effect, we'll be happy to. So, I mean, if you're going to erect a permanent structure of any kind, I, I, I don't understand. It don't matter if it's a fence, a house, a barn, or whatever it is. Once you put it down there and, and it's put there for a reason, to, to be an obstruction, to, to keep people from looking in your back door or uh, keep animals out, whatever the situation is, it's still not, 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 having the, um, not having the person to come down and say, this is what I want to do. Is that okay? Well, you're going to have to get a permit for that, and we're going to have to look at it before you do it. And I think in, in when we, we step up to the plate and we, fi and we say we're going to stop all this now, 
I don't care how big the project is or how small it is, and, and it doesn't take code enforcement or anybody else for that matter that long to go and look and see what the situation is. And we can stop this stuff, but as long as people think they can come down here and get, get forgiveness before they ask for permission, it ain't, it's, it's going to continue. And I think this, I challenge this commission to look at this closer and to, to let's consider putting something on the books that requires a permit for any kind of a permanent structure to be put anywhere in this county, whether it's for a, a, a alleyway that's not being used or whatever it is, but when it's got county property involved in it, I just believe, I mean, we're leaving ourselves wide open. Thank you. So, so could I just clarify, uh, because we're getting a little bit uh, off the beaten path here. The, the home was built within the, the, the appropriate specific specifications and requirements for setbacks, et cetera, correct? Correct, based on its own property line and not the okay. county alley. All right, so, so really what we're talking about is that piece of property, that, that 50 by 10 square foot, 500 square foot piece of property in the alley uh, that we know is not in, in what was typically considered to be an alley. If, if we went through all of Glenn County, Paul, Mr. Andrews, how many, how many different structures would have to be removed for people that might have uh, put, put a garden, put, put, a, put a, 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 a storage shelter, a fence, uh, and as, as you and I have walked these properties and have seen this, <coughs> And you and I have discussed this, and the issue of easements come up, and I and I say, okay, well they they've got that there. What if you all need to get in to do some drainage work, or or people from Georgia Power needs to get in, they have an easement. Well, the homeowner needs to take down that fence, Commissioner Stanbaugh, or take down that storage shed, and get it out of the way, and the county is not obligated to put their structure back. In fact, it's all done at the homeowner's expense, correct? Yes, sir. Th when we run projects through, that's how we put so, so, people. So I guess at the end of the day, of you know, no harm, no foul. Does that apply or no? Please, please. No, I'm. Okay. I mean, what? Where, where is the level of harm that you've observed through your years of working for the county for this type of activity that goes on throughout the county? For some reason, uh, this lady that I don't personally know and, and properties like this that I, that I have personally walked and I see no intrinsic harm occurring here or infringement upon the, the, the rights of county residents in general. What, 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 what's the harm that's being done to the county from your perspective? in terms of getting the job done that you all need to get done? Well, when, when we, if at some point we would have to use that alleyway, we would have to go through the process of letting people know that we would go through the process. I don't know that have to is the right word. It's typical. We, you tell we them to let get, people know. Tell them get rid of it. We need to do some we're work, gonna, We're going to be working in the alleyway behind your house. If you have anything <coughs> in there, remove it. Right. right. And if it's not removed, then we remove it. Right. That's, that's generally the path. All right, thanks. Well, Pam, I just want to say I, I don't think that your department did anything wrong. I know your complaint driven. A fence is not considered a permanent structure. I know that it's not going to require a permit. My issue is somebody bought a lot, tore down an old house, built one much, much bigger, built it right to the setback line, then put a fence up for a backyard and wants to put it in a pool. And now wants the county to abandon the property so they can put in their pool. I don't care about the fence that much. And I certainly am not talking about going over there and somebody's got a garden, which is not a permanent structure, and make them take it out. Or somebody else that's mowing it and keeping it nice. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think anybody has a problem with that. My <laughs> issue is, is if you buy the lot, you have the setback, you built, you're legal, you're good. Now you want the county to change the rules for you so you can have in a pool. And that's basically the bottom line. And a fence. You want a nicer, bigger backyard because you want, didn't want to build a little bit smaller house and have your pool. Now you want the county to do that. And I'll bring this up one more time. 
that elderly gentleman, and it wasn't 18 inches. Commissioner Browning reminded it was one inch over the easement. He had another issue, which he was willing to tear down, but one inch, and this commission denied him the permit to put the roof back on his cement block garage. So at this point, I'm not willing to bend on this one because this should have been done long before they built the house and long before they decided they wanted to pull. If they wanted to pull, they should have made arrangements to do that at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Please. <coughs> this is not peanut gallery. Um, the, uh, anything else for staff? Yeah. Um, am I hearing tonight that if you put a fence up, it has to be within the setback? No, no, sir. You can build the fence up to and on your property line. Okay, you can put the fence where we're talking about a fence and setback. Uh huh? Home is there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, but I'm not talking about the home. The fence as it sits the, today. The fence is in the setback. The fence is in the county's right of way. Oh, it's in the right in the of way. In the alley. Oh, okay. It's okay. halfway into the county's alley right of way. Yeah, that's, that's it. Okay. All right. But if the fence had been built on the property line at the alley, that would be okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was listening to this. I missed. Okay. Because I'm thinking I've seen fences all over Marion County that I know is on people's property lines, on the property line. Um, it doesn't really move this any forward, but I just want to clarify a little bit from what Commissioner Stambaugh said about the old gentleman. Um, he had turned a garage into a mother-in-law suite. Then storm came through, damaged it. So we go out there. It's only then that we found out that on the other side of his house, he had added on to it and got a little bit into the setback. And we came down very hard. We made him tear that down. And that, he had built that years ago. We made that 80-something-year-old fella, because he was in the setback, tear that down. We did that here. And this is only, this has been within the last year. Uh, he was not four, five, six, seven, eight, nine feet, you know. Uh, and we caught that by, by chance. <clears throat> so, you know, we did that. This, 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 this board did that. Um, so the issue here is they put a fence up in the alleyway. And so we're here to bottom line is to either give up to abandon the alleyway and make all that legit, or we don't vote to give that up. Um, yes, sir, Commissioner Browning, anywhere in the county if a property owner is adjacent to county right away, there is a process for which they can come before you all mm -hmm. and request that you abandon it back to them and it to become their property. Right. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm clear on it now. Thank you. Just one more addition to the gentleman on Canary Drive. I think he had built the structure without a building permit. Yes, he did. So, um, so I guess the question for my fellow commissioners, if this person had not put that fence up, and they simply came and asked, would you abandon that so I can put a fence up? Would it make any difference? So you just don't like the fact that the fence went in first. <laughs> How about they take it down and come back and see it? All right, whatever. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I'd like to echo Commissioner Murphy's comments. As long as I've been on commission, we've been abandoning alleyways and property in East Beach and everything else. And it's always for one reason or another, because of setbacks, because somebody built something on the county right of way, on county property, et cetera. And now all of a sudden, based on the conversation of some other commissioners, we want to start going in and, and have code enforcement ride all over Glen County and have people tear these structures down and move them or whatever because uh, they weren't put up the way they were supposed to be originally. So uh, I just, I think it's ridiculous. <clears throat> Any other comments or discussion or? Well, let me just say this. 
because it does matter to me that this is done in advance on this particular case because I feel like they're, they decided to do this as a part of um, the overall plan for this de development. The other abandonments, I felt people were up front uh, and they just came to ask for it. So I didn't have a problem with it. And I wouldn't have had a problem with this had they done this in advance. But I just, there's something about this that's telling me that this, this is just not right, this particular one. And um, I decided myself to look at these case by case. So I may get criticized for this vote. It won't be the first time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Paul, if you can help me. I don't recall that we've ever approved an abandonment when someone had already built into an alleyway that they asked us to abandon. I do recall a number of times where we have abandoned an alleyway which would provide sufficient setback, okay, for something that was built within the setback but still on the property. And there's, you understand what I'm saying? There's been quite a few times where people have built on their property. This, see, this fence is not on the property. They got outside the property. They're not just too close setback. They got it completely out of the setback and off the property is what I'm hearing. I don't recall that we've ever approved an abandonment so someone could build in the property or they had already built in the property and then we, by approving it, we make it right. Can, can I help with that? Yeah. Can I, can I help with that? Paul, you remember that case in Glen Haven that, that's taken about, started before I became sworn in and, and some fella had a garage or a storage shed on county property and, and, and the neighbors got involved and you got involved and I got involved. Somehow a year later, we, we, we approve that abandonment. This, this is, trust me, if you want to come out and walk these properties, Commissioner Brown, I'd be happy to take you. There is all sorts of stuff on these quote unquote abandoned pieces of, of ground. And uh, I mean, to me, I, I, I understand that it seems offensive that somebody's put up a fence, but, but it's not the only thing that's been put up on county property and used for years. And had somebody not want to build a patio or, or, or uh, put an addition on their garage or, or build a swimming pool, they wouldn't even ask. And we'd never even know about it. But the fact of the matter is, if it's not impeding county business and impeding our engineers and our public works and, and, and Georgia Power to get their jobs done, you know, really, what difference does it make? Paul, Paul help me out here. Within the last couple of years, didn't we – abandoned property in East Beach where some stairs or something had been built into the into the setback or right away or something like that and we had to yes uh, we had a, we had an abandonment where a patio was was installed and on if it's the one we're thinking about is is that they um, there was a agreement to remove that and replace it with the pool <coughs> with the you abandonment know, because they were wanting to move forward with the pool right. I, so, yeah, I, I believe so. Yes. You know, and, and it's also a new homeowner who just bought the property who had not built the stairs. Yeah, exactly. I, I've so. got a, I've, I've got a little bit of heartburn, I, and I certainly understand where Commissioner Murphy's coming from. But I, I've got a little bit of a heartburn about encroaching in the setback versus encroaching in the right way. And uh, I recall, oh, I, help me, uh, Jr. I think it was. Uh, the, the lady that had the gazebo You're was a young lady who had a gazebo that was in Tennessee, the right of way and we made, made we her made her move down. that. Yes. I mean, it, it, it. I thought it was a safety issue um, because the thing was too close, and <laughs> and we made, you know, it was in the right of way, and we made her move that thing, and it was a pretty, it was a considerable project, and I, I just, you know, was that a request for an abandonment also? No, and, uh, I don't. Well, you know, I, I think it's so. one thing to put something in a county right away, and it's another to put it in a piece of property like this that is a quote unquote an alley, but nobody ever uses it other than the homeowner that's right there. 
I, I don't recall, Commissioner Murphy. I, I, it seemed like there was some talk about an abandon, abandonment or something, but I, I can't remember. But I just know we made the lady move for property because it was in the right of way. W would anybody if, uh, be offended if I called the question and, 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 and make a, a motion? Yes, sir. I, I think we've kind of beat this one up. I make a motion uh, to approve of the abandonment of a portion of an unopened alley right of way in Block 23 in the Each Beach subdivision as shown in the attached application map. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving the abandonment signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed? Please, please. Thank you, Commissioner. Just tell them to move the fence and then come back. Uh, all right. Uh, the, um, the abandonment is denied. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve all items on consent agenda general business and consent agenda finance uh, with the exception of any items any commissioner so wishes to pull. Second. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull uh, item, um, hold on a second, number 26. Finance Committee Consent Agenda, please. 26, and I'm sorry, which? I, item 26. Just 26? Yeah, just 26. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull 27 and number five on the um, general business agenda. Okay. Um, all right, we have a motion and a second uh, to approve the agenda items with the exception of item number five, 26 and 27, I believe. Any further discussion? Motion and a second to approve those consent agenda items with the exception of those three. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Signify by raising your right hand. That is unanimous. <coughs> All right. Uh, FB 3648, Blocks 1 through 3, Block 3, Island Retreat Subdivision, and a portion of Georgia Street approve a final plat to create three lot sub, uh, to <coughs> create a three lot subdivision. The property is zoned village residential and the track of land is to be subdivided. It's 23,083 square feet in size. The property is located at 350 Ocean Boulevard, St. Simons Island. Parcel ID 04-04910, Palmetto Building Group, owner and applicant. Ms. Thompson. Good evening. Pamela Thompson, Director of Community Development. Uh, this is a item for you to consider approval of this final plat to create three, a three-lot subdivision. This preliminary plat did receive approval from the Islands Planning Commission at their regular meeting in February, on February 21st, 2017. You have in your packet the memo, the zoning map, the plat, and the review history from all the county um, and joint water staff that have reviewed this plat. Uh, staff does recommend approval of this final plat and surveyor Bobby Shute is here as agent for the applicant if you have any questions. Are there any questions for staff? I have some questions. Uh, Ms. Thompson, do you, do you have the, the plats can you put up there? No, sir, I do not. Okay. Um, you have a preliminary plat and you have a final plat. Yes, sir. Okay. And forgive me, I, I don't have my laptop with me tonight. <laughs> so anyway, um, and when you look at this, your <clears throat> when you look at the preliminary plat, you see, um, what appears to be bodies of water, lagoons, or something along those lines. And when you look at the final plat, uh, it doesn't appear that those are still there, that they've been covered up, filled in, uh, flattened over, whatever. And, and if you look at it, I mean, the way they're gonna put three houses on this piece of property, you know, it appears that, that, you know, one of these, one of these buildings or one of these houses is going to be 
sitting pretty much right on top of what used to be a water hole. And, you know, my, my question, um, if indeed this is what I'm seeing, uh, is this, has all this stuff been checked out or who, who approved the, the filling in of the, of the lagoons or, or whatever you want to call them, uh, the low spots that were full of water at one time, and then uh, apparently they were filled in and now uh, you're asking us to approve something here to, to build uh, housing on top of something of that nature. I mean, is it, what, what process do they go through here? And, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if the plats, the preliminary plat and the final plat, in my mind, don't match. Uh, Commissioner Coleman, thank you for the question. And Bobby Shoup, I believe, has a full-size copy of the plat with him this evening. There was discussion before the Islands Planning Commission of uh, concerns about some wet areas, and there were no designated wetlands in that area. So um, I, th I think that question was raised. It was answered to the Islands Planning Commission's satisfaction that there are no designated wetlands on these parcels. So if you like, M Mr. Shoup is here and can show you the plat uh, or answer any other questions you may have for him about that. Sure, I mean, that's, that's any the question. And you know, like I said, what I'm asking here is, is what appeared to be a, a, a low spot full of water at one point is not there anymore. There may be low spots on any property. There is nothing designated that cannot be graded to be constructed on. There were no lagoons on the property. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I mean, if if, if you'd like to step up, I mean, I'd, I'd like to hear the, the. Any other commissioners have any questions for Ms. Thompson while she's at the podium? I apologize. I do know we had one commissioner abstain. Um, I can look that up and tell you that while, while you're asking Mr. Shoup any questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Shoup, you're representing the applicant. Would you like to come forward? Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, for the record, my name is Bobby Shoup. I'm the surveyor in charge here. Um, the questions about lagoons, maybe I address that first. Uh, they were shown on the preliminary plat. They're also shown on the final plat. I have a full-size copy here, if you'd like me to give it to you. Um, do, do you want? Yeah. What, what I'm saying is, I mean, if they're, they're shown, but when you, I guess the question is, if just because they're shown, I mean, have they been, uh, are, are you building around these spots? Or, I mean, have they been filled in or have been, uh, you know, what's, what's the deal? I mean, when you, we all know Glenn Excuse County's, me, I, I Glenn County's got there, water very close to the surface. <laughs> Could we have order, please? I apologize. I couldn't understand what you were saying. There was we, all, we all know there. Glenn County's got water very close to the surface and in, in uh, more places than we'd like to admit. But mm -hmm. when you have uh, preliminary plats that's showing standing water, and, and is that is that what we're looking at here? Or, or No, sir. The preliminary plat did not show any water on these lots. Uh -huh. We showed them adjacent to the property, both in a private owner of uh, a detention pond for the Grove subdivision mm -hmm. that's to the north of it. And then there's a ditch that comes up in the county right away called Ocean uh, Avenue. And those both still exist exactly the same way they were before. Um, they have not changed and there is no plans to change those. One's on private property, the other's on county property. So these people have no right to change or alter those whatsoever. So what you're saying is, is in, in your opinion uh, or your professional opinion, uh, there's no, uh, once these, these dwellings are built, uh, there's no uh, chance that there would be any interference from you know, uh, sub 
subsurface water or, or sinking and, and something of this nature. Um, I just know, you know, when, when you, a lot of people build close to the marsh. Sure. I built close to the marsh, and I, I know yes, sir. Uh, 60 loads of dirt and, and, and reinforced footers and steel rebar and extra concrete and all that kind of stuff had to go in to support the house and, and for no other reason other than I was so many feet from the marsh and you had a soft soft ground and, and you can go down to my yard anywhere in, in any square foot of it and three feet you hitting water uh, and, and it's like that all over Glenn County. So anyway, that, that's what I was getting at. And, and you know, I just uh, just want to make sure we had we had those bases covered with, with the foundation and all of this stuff. So to answer your question directly about the subsurface water and the stability of the land, I am not a professional in that business, so I really can't assert to that. Uh, but I completely agree with you. I'm in the process of building the house as well. I hired a geotechnical engineer. These people should be doing the same thing. It will tell them whether there's surge loads or pilings or whatever needs to go on. But those, whenever those plans are developed, then they go back through the county and they're vetted to ensure that they're not violating any setbacks, that everything's that they're going to construct on these lots, not on the adjoining property or not out in the road, meet all the county regulations. Thank you. Ms. Thompson, you are. Yes, sir, to follow up to Commissioner Stanball's uh, question about how the vote was at the February 21st, 2017 Islands Planning Commissioner Commission meeting. The vote was 6-0-0. Six, zero, zero. six commissioners voted in favor, none were against, and one abstained from the vote. All right, any other questions for staff? Any questions for the applicant? All right, I will entertain. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve FP 3648. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the motion signify by raising your right hand. That, uh, six four and one against thank you the final plat is approved item number 26 award a contract for engineering services for the east beach causeway traffic improvement project which includes roundabouts at both ends of East Beach Causeway to EMC Engineering <coughs> Services, Inc., Savannah, Georgia, in the amount of $163,000 with funding to be provided by Supplies 2016. Uh, Mr. Austin. Uh, good uh, evening, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, we're here uh, continuing with the uh, uh, improvements, Supplies improvements uh, to the traffic situation at, uh, on St. Thomas Island. And uh, you may remember at a work session, the board approved the two roundabouts at either end of East Beach Causeway. And so here we have selected a design firm to uh, design those two roundabouts. Uh, there were four firms that uh, bid. Uh, this particular firm had the highest total score, had the second highest technical score, and had the lowest cost. We had a uh, technical review committee of three of our engineers on staff and uh, they came up with a scoring and they recommended this firm. <coughs> Questions for staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this, this is more for the rest of the board than it is necessarily for Dave. Did I fall asleep or did, what did we agree on a causeway on both ends? I, I thought the discussion we had was uh, at the end of the, of the causeway there prior to East Beach, but I don't remember us talking about another causeway or a roundabout at the other end. Yeah, we did. Yes, sir, we did. We did? Yeah, yeah that, that was at a work okay. session. We all voted on it. <laughs> My apologies. I must have. That's all right. Off. I'll send you a, a memo next time. <laughs> no, no, I, I know we talked about the one. Uh, right, there's two cause. Yeah. There's, there's a causeway and there's two roundabouts at either end. Right. And we voted on it. We. We had, a, we, we had a work session, and you all suggested I had a town hall. I had a town hall, and, I, and we've discussed it. We had another work session. We voted on it, and we voted to move ahead with the two roundabouts uh, on East Beach Causeway, uh, concomitant with uh, the, the needed repaving of multiple roads on St. Simons Island. Okay. I, 
I'm not arguing with you. I just don't remember the two causeway part. I must be the two roundabout part. Two roundabouts. That's all right. We, we know what you mean. Way, we know what you mean. <laughs> Maybe that's why you don't remember it because they're roundabouts, not causeways. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm losing it. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Any questions, gentlemen? Questions for staff? Any question? Any other questions for staff? Yeah. Let me let me ask just to clarify. So this was the lowest bid, correct? Correct. But are you comfortable that in spite of the fact that this was the lowest bid, the technical scores were sufficiently uh, high and, 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 uh, and uh, We are comfortable with this firm, and this firm has built roundabouts before. So you have experience with them? Yes, sir. Very good. So it's not based solely on the low price of the bid, correct? Correct. And how many engineers from the county did you say reviewed this? Three. Uh, three. I just wanted to get that on the record again. Thank you, yeah, thank you, Commissioner Jason, Strickland. Uh, I'm not, I'm not losing it yet, but I may, I, you were I may soon. <laughs> I know, I know. Mr. Uh, Mr. Austin, Mr. Austin, does to you, Commissioner. <laughs> Mr. Sure. Mr. Austin, would you read the, each criteria that you? So uh, we, the the, uh, the criteria that we evaluate on is uh, personal experience, project approach, and understanding, uh, the company subcontractors. That's the total score, or that's the total technical score. Those are what the three engineers look at. Then there's a local preference, and then the, uh, then the finance uh, folks uh, put in the cost. So the technical, uh, technical folks don't see the cost or the uh, local preference piece. So they're totally independent. The yes, scores sir. are added up. Thank you. All right, any other questions for staff? Chairman, I make a motion to approve East Beach Causeway Traffic Second. Improvement Project. Got it. I don't have a question. I just got a comment. Sure. Okay. Um, Why don't we get the motion and the second down and then we'll okay, go ahead. discuss it, okay? All right, we got a motion. Did somebody second? We got a motion and a second. All right, discussion. Commissioner Coleman. Yes, sir. Um, I don't guess I have to remind you all I voted against both of these all through the process. Um, and, and I don't think uh, it's any better now than it was then. Uh, I don't think we've done our due diligence good enough. Um, and I, I just don't feel like that, uh, that the uh, you know, popular vote on this thing would, would if, if it got to that, uh, I don't think it would, it would carry. And, and I'm speaking for my concern of the uh, folks that have spoken out against this that live over there they're gonna have to deal with this day in and day out and um, I just don't feel like that this is this is something that, that needs to be done without the adequate uh, due diligence being uh, an update traffic study and uh, this was never um, this was never updated and I just feel like things have changed since they did it last time was a lot of unanswered questions in that last traffic study, and um, mind you, again, you're, sp you're spending the taxpayers' dollar here, and I believe if you took a popular vote on it today, you'd finally get voted down you know, uh, uh, quite heavily. So uh, I'm, I'm here, and, and that's, I'm speaking for the people that have have talked to me about it, that have have voiced their opinions about it. The, the no need for it. And uh, what this is going to accomplish uh, is, is still beyond me, but I, I think it's going to end up uh, coming back to haunt us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Coleman. I any other discussion? Any further discussion? All right. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of awarding the contract to EMC Engineering Services, Savannah, Georgia, for $163,000 with funding to be provided by SPLOS 2016-65 ratio right hand. That is six. All those opposed, one. Thank you. Item 27, award a contract for engineering services for the Kingsway Frederica Traffic Improvement Project to Southeastern Engineering, Inc., Marietta, Georgia, in the amount of $84,900 with funding to be provided by SPLOS 2016. Mr. Austin. So in, on, in this particular in, uh, intersection, uh, in the pond study and also voted on in the SPLOS, uh, there was a long-term solution and a short-term solution. And so uh, in the RFP, uh, we uh, uh, asked the firm to design both the long-term and the short-term solution for this intersection, and we will bring those back to the board in a work session 
and they will brief you on those two uh, situations. So this particular intersection, uh, there is a, we will do two concept designs. One concept design for better signalization and, 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 and some lanes, some extended lanes, and the other concept will be for a roundabout. And so they will bring that back to you, work session, you guys will tell us what uh, you want to do, and then we will go to full design on it. This particular uh, firm, we've had uh, four firms uh, submit bids. We had three firms that were close, and we had one firm that was, uh, that was uh, had a very high bid. Of the uh, three firms that were uh, at the low end of the spectrum, we selected or recommend you select uh, the South en East Engineering, who has the highest score of the uh, lowest bids, okay? So they're not the lowest bidder. The lowest bidder was 73. They're at 84, but they have a higher score, a higher technical score and a higher total score. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Any questions for staff? Yeah, the only question I have, Dave, and, and this is kind of, I mean, I know we go to the work session, but the conceptual drawings for a roundabout, are, are we taking into consideration that the airport's right there? And that oh, exactly. Ac absolutely. We have already talked. This. Okay. We've already talked with them. Uh, it's, that, that's a problem, and they're going to have to show us how that's going to work. And we have an, another commissioner on the island who's very skeptical about this particular intersection. No, I, I'm just saying, we own that property, and I, I don't know what the setbacks and everything are for the, for the FAA. It's, not, it's typically height more so than it is distance. I haven't had a chance to look it up on the right. CFRs, but we have that property there, so I want to make sure that if we need to utilize it we, we, when we design this, we keep that in mind. Yeah, so I, uh, Ben Pierce has already talked to Ron. Uh, about that, um, Robert Burr about that, and they'll be involved in it, and you know, there it, it is tight on that corner, so they're going to have to figure that out, and you guys are, will uh, definitely be involved in that. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. So, yeah, I just a uh, question. Uh, Commissioner uh, Strickland was asking me, three engineers reviewed this again? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, that's good. But, but, but to reiterate, uh, when the original uh, proposal that, that you all uh, submitted with the SLOS 2016, and, and, and remind you again, I was not part of that. There were like 10 intersection improvements on St. Simons Island. Two, two thus far are, are moving toward a roundabout solution. This one troubled me because the solution given in the SPLOS proposal, if you look at the, the pond study that's based upon, was for a single lane roundabout. And I was concerned about the volume of traffic going through a single lane roundabout. Furthermore, the question I asked Dave to, to pose to the engineers is, okay, do we have sufficient land to do a two-lane roundabout? And the other concern I had, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, is that, is that that original study suggested even a single-lane roundabout would cost $1.4 million to construct. I think that was the rough estimate they gave. Awful lot of money to build what I thought could potentially be an insufficient roundabout so the idea here is, can we save the county an awful lot of money by just changing the signalization? Uh, what, do they, what do they call it, a split signal right now? Mm -hmm. where, where if you're going into the village on Kingsway and you got a green light, the people coming out of the village have a red light, which makes no sense at all. And you know, that's just the way it's been designed. And now put some turning lanes in there and, and maybe save some money. And uh, we may find out we don't have uh, enough land for a two-lane roundabout, so that that's really what's we'll, what's we'll at, be, uh, at we'll stake be here. Interested to see what they come up. With. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks should, should for all your us, work. Should give us some guidance here. All right. Any other questions or for staff? All right. Entertain a motion. Yeah, make a motion to. Uh, we're on twenty-seven, correct? Right. You get my numbers all confused here. Recommend a motion to award a contract for engineering, engineering services for the Kingsway Frederick Traffic Improvement Project to Southeastern Engineering of Marietta, Georgia, in the amount of $84,900 with funding from SPLOS 2016. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Once again, I'd like to comment uh, on this. Um, um, I fear repeating myself from item number 26 I'm I'm just here to say this I, I feel like the same applies here uh, 
if you, whether it's a one, one lane roundabout, two lane roundabout, well, do we need a three lane roundabout? We don't know because we haven't got an updated traffic study. Our traffic study uh, is, is uh, several years old. Uh, there was a lot of unanswered questions in it and we're proceeding uh, uh, based on that information and I just don't feel like we're giving this uh, a fair shake. And um, once again, um, if, if we went to a popular vote with this, I don't think there would be any question about what direction it would go in. It would be a big fat no. Um, so um, I, I stick with my, my guns on this. Uh, I think we're, this is a, a waste of taxpayers' dollars when you get in the cart before the horse, and um, uh, I certainly do not support it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of uh, approving the contract for uh, engineering services for $84,900 signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed? Six to one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Um, appointments. Item number 29. Consider the appointment of two applica applicants to serve on the Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax Plus 2016 Citizens Oversight Committee. The terms begin immediately and end December 31st, 2021. Applications are received from uh, Jane Frazier, Mary Harris, Burt. Bert Roughton and uh, Barrett Walker. Commissioner Coleman, I believe one of these appointments is yours and one is Commissioner Booker's. And if you would like to make an appointment. Um, yes, I'd like to appoint Jane Frazier. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Frazier is the appointee. Uh, Commissioner Booker. I would like to appoint Mary Harris. Mary Harris is the appointee. All right, uh, congratulations or condolences, with whichever is applicable. Uh, and uh, down to general business. Uh, number 30, consider exempting the uh, bidding requirements for the professional services for the Hornet Street Ditch Project with funding to be provided by SPLOS 2016 Bridge Project. This is change order number two to the EMC engineering contract for the South Palm Ditch Project in the amount of $105,000, Mr. Andrews. Commissioners, this, re this request is uh, pertains to a uh, SPLOS 2016 project at the Hornet Street outfall on Highway 17. Um, currently, EMC Engineering is working on a um, project to, to upgrade drainage underneath the Highway 17 at the South Palm Ditch in this location. This is Westminster Apartments is here. Um, South Palm Road is here. Uh, request before you is to include in EMC Engineering's contract the work to do a similar project design in this location at, this, at the Hornet Street outfall. The um, reason I'm bringing this to you is that the scope of the projects are um, nearly identical. They're, they're do, the request is to do the same work for the engineer to do the same design work. Um, the size of the ditches is, is different, but the, um, what we're needing from the design engineers is, is very similar. The location is the same and the permitting will be the, the same, dealing with uh, both Georgia DOT and the uh, state under the uh, uh, Martian Protection Act. Uh, in this is the results of the bid that was for the South Palm Ditch. Um, EMC Engineering and Hussey Gay Bell were the two firms that um, submitted bids in 2016, the end of 2016. Um, there, um, the technical scores were uh, very similar. Um, EMC Engineering had a, uh, a substantially lower price for the uh, for the work. Um, their their overall score was therefore uh, substantially higher than Hussey Gay Bell's, but the um, EMC was awarded that contract, and this is a request to have them do the similar work in the Hornet Street location. So are you telling us that EMC will do both ditches for $205,000 total under the original first ditch contract with $105,000 increase, which Hussey Gay Bell bid 227 on just the one ditch? Is that correct? That is correct. 
Well, they, they'd be actually 200, yes, sir. They, they'd be a little bit over. I think we've got a change order currently in the process for EMC because we had to expand the scope of their current ditch project. So the, but it's another $5,000 to do some title work that wasn't anticipated. Well, how many change that, orders do you have? Th that would be the, the first change order. Yeah, that's five grand. Another 105 for a total of 205,000. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. An another change order is coming forward. We're, we found that the county doesn't have as much title in the area as we as we had thought, so we're going to have to do some title work. That's why EMC up their bid was to include the the work that make it more reflective of the work they're they're seeing on this project. Uh, Paul. Yes. Sir. <clears throat> South Palm Ditch project. Yes, sir. That is the one where we're going all the way across 17, right? Yes, sir. It sure is. What is what's the cost of that to go across to ditch all that across 17? Because we've got a. <clears throat> do you recall? Uh, and, we had and, 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 and of course, that's the SPOS project, too. It right? is. That's yes, the SPOS sir. project. We've got money in there for it, but that's a substantial. It is. The, the, uh, I want to say we had, uh, I want to say it was a million. Yeah. But after preliminary permitting with Georgia DOT, I think that number is going to come down because a bridge isn't isn't what Georgia DOT is approving yeah. in there. Yeah, they would do something to what, culverts or something? Yes, sir. Large, yeah. large box culverts right. is where okay. it's going. But anyhow, now, is a Hornet Street ditch project, was, was funding for that? Is there any money for that? Was that part of SPLOSC? It was, it's specifically called out in SPOS 2016. Okay, the Hornet Street project is, I mean, so we're going to do another crossing of 17? Yes, sir. Well, this is built on uh, several years ago. We had uh, um, Thomas and Hutton is the consultant that did it. They uh, did a um, analysis of all, the, of all the crossings under Highway 17. Um, we did it from... Spur 25 on up till uh, I think it was 99. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they prepared a, um, looked at the drainage coming to those crossings, looked at the crossings, identified which were, appeared to be functioning and into the future, and which were either failing now or were expected to be failing, prioritized them to say this is based on how badly they were performing and um, that's what we're working off of is that list. And so that's probably about another million dollar in one way or the other. The, like the, on the construction side, yeah. the Hornet Street ditch is probably not going to be as much. It's not as large of a ditch. It doesn't carry as much of a basin through it. So I, w I would expect the, con the actual construction cost for that to be lower. But from the design side, the bulk of the work is, is similar. I just couldn't remember all the different projects we had identified on, and I've got like Commissioner Stanbaugh here, you know, for, I forgot something. But, I understand. Uh, but anyhow. It's about five, five my money. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know why I didn't have the, you know, this idea of crossing 17 twice on my mind, but I didn't. But anyhow, um, you helped me. Thank you. Any, oh, any further questions? I got, I got a question. Paul, Hornet Street. No, yeah, Hornet Street. That is. It, it sits. Let me see if I can get my. It sits over this way. I'm sorry, Hornet Street. It sits over this that's way. In, that's in Fairway Oaks. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, it, 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 this is this is a ditch that drains that comes from Hornet Street. I, I don't know why it was named Hornet Street <laughs> Ditch. It, it makes more sense on the South Palm because the South Palm Ditch parallels South Palm. Right. Hornet Street goes up and drains Hornet Street is the, I, I assume that it's, it's a name that we've called it. It's when we go to Georgia DOT, we'll be permitting it at mile marker, uh, whatever the mile marker is along that route. It's that Hornet Street is the name, is just the kind of the, the name that it's been called by the county staff. Just for identity purposes. Yes, sir. But the, so right there, put, put your arrow on it again. Yes, sir. Okay, so that that's where 
Commissioner Browning was talking about, we're going to, where's, where's the actual, what's already, what's there now? Uh, I believe it's a, a two round pipes is what's there. But it, but it goes, it, got, it, it goes under the highway now. Yes, sir. It's the, just the, all that's just going to be redone with box culverts and all that. I, I just can't quite picture where that's coming out at. It it, it runs in between. Um, uh, it's right, be, right before you get to the country club on the left there. If you're yes. going north on 17, well, you can see the, I think that's the country club there. It, that is. But and it, this it, is the. Um, that's Fairway Oak. I mean, that's um, club, um, country club park. That's correct. And yeah. if you go in there and is take a left, this road actually dead ends into the ditch. And this is the, uh, I, I cannot remember the name of the, uh, of the uh, mobile home park that sits there, but that okay. backs up to the All other right. side. I know where, I know where you, but the, but the, right now, I mean, there's just not that much visible. Is no, sir, there's not. Okay, it's not as visible as the ditch that runs parallel with, with the South Palm. You're correct. It goes it, under it, the road there and runs by that guy's house out to the marsh. That, that's correct. It's not, it's not nearly as visible. You have to slow down and kind of look this, up the ditch this line. This one's a little bit north of that. That's correct. Yes, sir. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah, there's, am I not mistaken, there's several uh, pipes that go under 17 that I don't think a lot of people know about. Uh, they just had not been updated in a long, long time. Yes, sir. There, we there. catch all that water in Bell Point. <laughs> that you, that you they're taking that to you, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> all that water. The I good thing is, is that. these are downstream from your second entrance, from your southern entrance. This is Bell Point, right? The northern entrance, the southern entrance. This is uh, what's called on the maps as Hog Crawl Creek winds up through here. So this is actually dropping out south of the area that impacts Bell Point. Yeah, I don't think me and Commissioner Brunson were thinking about building on the east side of, <laughs> or living on the east side of 17 there. All the water and just about all the water in Glenn County comes right at our door, uh, trying to get to that marsh. But okay, I see what we're, we're just going to open up. Yes, sir. Make it bigger and more water. <laughs> Planning for the future. <laughs> right. And dealing with the current. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions for staff? Yeah, can you get a price on how much it would cost to pipe all this to Bob's house? We, we need some pumps down there now. <laughs> Maybe it'll help, Bob. Maybe it'll help. Um, all right, any other questions for staff? All right. Mr. Chairman, I'll make make a motion to uh, exempt the bidding requirements for professional services for Corner Street Ditch Project. The fund will be provided by Squad 2016 Bridge Project. Okay, go to number two. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? of approving um, this project signify by raising your right hand. Um, all right, item number 31, consider authorizing staff to issue a solicitation for concession sales on the beach between beach access number 23 and beach access, n access number 41 between Coast Guard and Massengale for summer 2018 subject to approval by, by the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, Lisa. Good evening, how are you, how are you doing? I'm doing good. And last but not least. Um, yes, sir, tonight we're bringing forward um, the request to issue a solicitation for concession sales on the beach between access uh, points number 23 and number 41. Uh, at the finance committee meeting, the recent finance committee meeting, there was discussion about the renewal of a concessions agreement for the Coast Guard part, which was uh, has been done for several years now. And in 2017, the Board of Commissioners approved that vendor having uh, the ability to have carts on the beach, non-motorized push carts on the beach. As a result of the success of that last year, at the Finance Committee meeting, there was discussion asking staff to explore the possibility of expanding that uh, service this year by possibly um, allowing the opportunity for other vendors to, to bid on that. So to give you kind of an overview of the in entire beach concession plan for summer of 18, the Coast Guard concessions, which is this, the large blue area uh, from Beach Access 25 to Beach Access 41, that is the contract that was renewed in the consent agenda to Sunset Slush uh, for the third year extension of that contract. And we'll, th that company will have the beach, uh, non-motorized push carts on the beach in that section of the beach 
for tonight, what we're looking at is the red area, which we're calling New East Beach Concessions. And what that vendor, what we would do is we would prepare a request for quote for vendors to bid on the, um, the right to be able to then, again, non-motorized push carts on the beach between access points 23 and then 41. And then also uh, previously, and again, you'll have to, if you have questions, it may be others to answer because I wasn't here last summer, but uh, also last summer there was a one-year agreement for Massingale concessions, and the vendor for that operation in the smaller area from uh, beach access 23 to 25, they would have the Massingale site and then the beach area in front of Massingale. But for tonight, well, all we're asking is the, um, the request to issue a solicitation to bid for on, beach, on the beach concessions for the, the red-lined area. Questions for staff? Yeah, that looks like it's from the Massingale concessions part all the way up to 41. Is that what we're... That, that's what the area includes, and, and the Coast Guard concession contract includes 25 all the way up to 41, but uh, the reality is the concessionaires really don't go past about beach access 20, um, 28 or 30. They don't really go past the Coast Guard area, even though that is the area of beach that they're, um, that's included. Okay. So you're looking to go on a, a rebid. Uh, we're not asking for more people. We're just doing a rebid of what was originally approved before. Is that correct? No, sir. This actually so would be a new, um, a new This would be a brand contract. new Yes, sir. It could be the same vendor. They would have the right to bid on, on this section, but it would be a new, a new concession. Okay. So you could potentially have three different vendors on the beach, but you could have two, depending on how the bids go. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, so that's an important point to, to emphasize. At the end of the day, how many vendors will be hawking product on the beach, potentially? In the red area, you would have at the most two because you'd have somebody from one red line to the other red line. And then in the, in the middle, you would have one from in Massingale and one in Coast Guard. So at any one area, there'd only be two, but you could have the same person you know, doing it. So you could end up with, with less than but that. But the point, point I'm trying to make is we're not at this point anticipating, you know, a multiplicity of vendors cluttering our beach with the potential trash problems. That's correct. And, and by all accounts from last uh, summer, the group that was on the beach last summer was extremely, um, did, was extremely helpful in keeping the beach clean and, and made a, a strong point to, to do their part and then some to keep the beach clean. And we anticipate and would hold those folks accountable to do the same this summer. And, and you're exactly right. They did a spectacular job taking care of policing the area from, from the product they, felt they sold. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? All right. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Got second. Second. Motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. That's that. Uh, we have executive session, so if I could get a motion to Going to executive Commissioners, that's for pending litigation. For pending litigation. Got a motion and second for pending litigation. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Here we go.
Mr. Chairman, motion to come out of executive session. <laughs> we have a motion to come out of executive session. Do we got anybody here? Yeah, we don't, so. Can I get a second from somebody? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of coming out of executive session? Coming out of executive session. <laughs> that is unanimous. Thank you. All right. I'd like to make a motion to accept the recommendation of the county attorney in uh, reference to pending litigation. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Motion to adjourn. Motion.